Hello everybody and welcome to another video here at TD Channel. Today in um, this video of our introduction to programming series we're going to go over iteration. So what is iteration? Uh, iteration uh, in programming terms uh, means that you're going to be able to repeat uh, a part of code. So uh, when it comes to programming, iteration are constructs that allow a piece of code to be repeated based on some rules. Um, as you could imagine, repeating code uh, execution is something that is extremely useful. You can use it to automate or create uh, large amounts of operations. For instance, if you need to populate, uh, let's say, um, a forest with uh, trees that you have created somewhere, you can write a, a script. And then in that script, you're more than likely going to have to uh, create a loop over which you're going to generate all the trees over your surface. So it's extremely useful uh, for many, many different reasons. Uh, what are the common constructs that are used for iteration in programming languages? Usually, most programming languages will have a while statement, a for statement, and some of them will have a for each, which is a, a more specialized statement that is used for arrays or lists. So let's look at a while loop. Um, it executes the code inside the code block as long as the main condition is true. So you can see here we have while, and then in there you're going to have a condition. And then as long as that returns true, you're going to go into the code block and execute what's inside the code block. Uh, it is up to the user to make sure that the condition changes at one point. If you don't change the condition at any point from being true to be false, uh, chances are you're going to end with what is called an infinite loop, and the computer is just going to keep doing this forever until you either crash the program or kill the application. The for loop. The for loop provides a shorthand way to repeat code. Uh, so it's kind of similar like the while loop, but as you can see here, you have four. And then you have three statements inside the parentheses. The first one is the uh, initialization. So here we're telling it that i is going to start with a value of 0. Then the next after the, the semicolon, you're going to have i is less than a maximum value. So that's the test that it's going to test for. And then at the end, you're going to have, uh, you're gonna have a, a little operation that's going to run after each loop. So in this case, we're telling i is going to be plus equals 1, which allows you to increment uh, i. Some programming languages allow you to do i plus plus, which means increment. Uh, but not all programming languages support that. So sometimes plus equal 1, uh, it allows you, uh, you can be sure that it's going to work pretty much on any programming language. And also this way, uh, if you, for some reason you need to increment by more than 1, you could do plus equal 2, for example. And then the last one in iteration uh, that I like to go over, it's uh, the for each loop. And uh, this kind of loop is available on some languages, not all of them have it. And it's a quick way to iterate over arrays or lists. So for example, in Python, you would have something like uh, my list equals hi, by, now, and then. And then you can do something like for each item in my list, and then you go into your code block. So this for each uh, this code block will evaluate once for each of the items in my list. So the first time it goes by is gonna uh, the value of item is gonna be high. The second time it iterates, the value of item will be by. Then it's gonna be no, and then it's gonna be then. Once it's done with then, it's gonna exit out of this. So now that we've seen, uh, we've you know had a, a brief introduction of of iterations and the different constructs that you can use. Let's uh, try to create a script that uses iteration to create some lights and randomize some of their attributes. So let's find my desktop and here I have Blender. Again, uh, you guys know I like to use this application because it's it's free and it supports uh, scripting and allows us to do a lot of uh, pretty cool things. So um, right here on the left I have my script. Let me see if I can make the text bigger if there's a way to do that. Okay, I'm having a hard time doing that. 
So in that case, I guess we're just going to go over what's going on. Let me, let me see. Maybe under preferences, there's a way to do this. All right, I don't see anything, so I guess we're just going to have to make do with the size of the text as it is. So uh, let's go over our script. I'm not going to write it as I go because that might take a little bit of time, but let's look. I'm just going to break it down line by line. The first part, the import part, here's where uh, in programming languages you uh, are able to bring code that has been written by other people or by yourself, but it's somewhere out in disk, so you're going to bring it into this uh, script so that you can use uh, a lot of the functions or a lot of the different uh, instructions that might be in other files. So we're going to import uh, BPI, which is the Blender, uh, um, the main Blender library. Then we're going to bring in this random, which is a module that allows you to do randomization of numbers. So next down, we're going to create some shorthand variables. Here you have circle equals bpi.data.objects. So this is how you access objects in Blender. And as you can see, I'm telling it to give me uh, the, the value objects, this value right here, is actually uh, an array. So I'm going to tell it to give me an array or a dictionary, and I'm going to tell it to give me uh, the object that has the name circle. So as you can see over here, circle is this particular guy right here. Then uh, we're going to get the vertices of the circle, and basically we do circle.data.vertices, and that's going to be stored in circle EFs, circle v VS, sorry. And then we're going to get the world matrix of the circle. So we do circle world matrix equals circle dot world underscore matrix. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the lights. So um, here we're going to see our first for loop. Uh, here on top we have a new lights uh, array that is empty. And the reason I create this is because I want to capture all of the lights that I'm creating so that I can use them later for randomization. So we're going to loop over the vertices. So we're going to do for i comma v in enumerate uh, circle vs. So circle vs, which was set up here, is an array of all the vertices in the circle. Uh, the enumerate function, this one right here, will actually spit out two different values. The first one is going to be the index of the current object in the array. So it's going to start from zero and go up to whatever, however number of vertices I have. And then V is going to represent the actual object, the actual data that's stored in that position in the array. Um, I think we've already covered arrays in previous videos, so you can refer to those if you need to. So then we go inside our, excuse me, then we go inside our script. And actually, we can get rid of this line because we don't need it anymore. And then we're going to create a new light on every uh, iteration of this loop. So for every vertice, we're going to create a new light. Uh, and that is done with this construct, lamp, add. And then we're going to give it a unique name. So that current light lamp is going to be the current selected object, the lamp that we just created. So we're going to capture that um, by getting the selected object's first item. And we're going to store that in new lamp. Then. We're going to append the new lamp that we just created, that variable. We're going to append that into the new lights array. Uh, remember this new lights array we created up here, it was empty. So we're starting to populate it to make sure that uh, we have a way to refer to all the lights that we created later on. Uh, next, we're going to give the new lamp a uh, new name. So you just do new lamp dot name equals random lamp and then underscore. And this, this right here is a way for you to format uh, an integer number, which is actually going to give you an integer that is padded with three values. So it's going to be 001, 002, 003. Um, I don't think we're going to have more lamps. I think this only has like 15 vertices. But uh, it's always good sometimes to add a little extra padding just in case you want to use the script for a big array of lights somewhere else. Uh, and then you tell it that you want to... Uh, this here is the Python formatting operation. So this this here, like I said, will become random lamp underscore 001, 002. Now we're going to position the light. So the position of the light of the new lamp, so as you can see here, new lamp dot location, is going to be equals to the circle world matrix 
by the uh, vertices current location. So the, the current location of every vertice is usually stored in the local coordinate system of every object. So they're all in a position based on the center or the pivot point of the object. To be able to get that position in world space, you have to multiply the, the matrix of the object times that uh, vertice value. And that's going to give you a new point position that's going to be in world space. So then what we're going to do is we're going to turn every other light off. So basically, whenever you do this right here, this is called the modulus operator. And what that does is it'll say uh, every couple of lamps basically is going to return zero. So every odd lamp is going to be on, every on lamp is going to be, uh, every even lamp is going to be on. Um, this way, we're going to create some kind of disco ball effect by turning some of them on and some of them off. Right? So that's what we're doing here. If, if I modulus of 2 equals 0, so that's going to be true for 1, 3, 5. Uh, the energy of the lamp is going to be set to 1. If not, it's going to be set to 0. Next down, we're going to set R, G, and B to a random value. Each one of these components is going to be a random value. Now, random dot random, uh, this right here returns a value between 0 and 1. And all of the colors inside Blender, they're stored between 0 and 1. They're, they're floating uh, point. Actually, you can go beyond 1 or below 1. But usually, the visual spectrum for most humans is between 0 and 1, um, especially in computers. So we randomize our color. Then we're going to tell it that you want uh, a ray shadow method. So you want all the shadows to be ray traced for all the lights that you're creating. Uh, next, we're going to uh, set the distance, which is how far a light can affect. Not all program, not all three D programs have this kind of uh, this kind of attributes for the lights, but Blender does. So we're just going to set the the distance to be five, so it doesn't go on forever. And then we're going to finally set the light samples. So this is going to set a whole bunch of um, uh, is going to tell Blender how many samples you want for every shadow. Um, so let's look a little bit down. So up to this point, we have just created a whole bunch of lights. Uh, now we can do a little bit of light randomization, and that's what we are going to use another for loop. So we're going to first capture the start. Uh, we're going to first capture the scene so that we have a handle to our scene state. Then we're going to create a variable called start, which is the starting frame of our animation. Then end, which is the ending frame of our animation. And then we're going to set the, the current frame to start. So this line right here is going to move the playhead all the way to the beginning. And then we're going to implement two for loops. The first one is going to say for i in range between start and end. So what this is going to do is going to increment the playhead little by little between the beginning and the end. And that value is going to be stored in the variable i. Then inside every frame of animation, we're going to do another loop in which we're going to loop over the new lights. Remember that we had stored um, that in a new array over here. So we're going to go ahead and iterate over those using the same method as before, enumerate, where L is going to have the index number and Li is going to be the actual data for that light that was stored in that array. So what we're going to do is every 12 frames, we're going to randomize the value of some of the values of the light. So what we do if i, and remember i holds the current um, frame, if i modulus of 12 equals 0, then we're going to change the hue of the color, and we're going to give it a random hue. Um, colors, as you know or might not know, can be represented in different uh, spaces. They can be RGB or hue saturation value, hue lightness value. Uh, so whenever you want to randomize the value, uh, it's usually better to do it on hue, because if you do it on RGB, you're going to get crazy colors. If you do it in hue, you can actually limit how off the base color it can go. So in this case, we don't really care. I just decided to do it in hue, because instead of having to do um, three random calls like we did up here, which is definitely more expensive than doing a single call. So here, all I'm going to do is randomize the hue. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a binary switch on the current value of the energy. So what we do is 
light data dot energy equals one minus light data dot energy. So if this value is zero, if this here is zero on the original light, the light will now have a value of one. And if this here is now one, you're gonna have one minus one zero. So this will allow you to flip lights on and off. Then we're gonna set a keyframe for those two things that we set, the color and the energy, and this is how you do it with these two constructs right here. Then we're gonna, um, at this point, because we're in Python, you can see here is where the for loop ends for, for the one that goes through all the lights. You see it goes all the way to here. So this will be the last night of that for loop. And actually, I'm going to insert a little space so we can see. So as soon as we're done iterating through all the lights, we're going to go and we're going to uh, set uh, the current frame to i. And remember, i is just going to be incrementing between start and end. And then once we're done with all of that, and that ends right here, this line right here is outside this for loop, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set the current frame back to the beginning so that the playhead is not all the way to the end. So that's it. That's our script. You can see it's 67 lines uh, with a good amount of comments. It would probably be a lot less if you wanted to be more efficient in you know typing less, but documenting is always a good idea. So we're going to go ahead and run this. We have our scene over here. You can see the objects that we have in our scene. If I just click on run script, and where did it go? Right here. Or you can just go text run script. And done. It took a split of a second. And you can see right now we have random lamp 000 all the way to 0031. That's how many vertices um, that disk had, that circle had. So now we have all these lights, and if we look over here, this usually tells us that we have a whole bunch of keyframes. I'm going to go ahead and change this to the graph editor. And you can see that, for example, this particular light has keyframes pretty much on every frame. But since we create it automatically and we're not going to be animating this by hand, it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, but basically, you can see if I expand here each channel, that the R, the G, and the B, the color changes every 12 frames, and the energy actually right now is on zero, then on frame 10 it, uh, it stops being zero, and then in frame 11, I believe, yeah, in frame 11 it goes to one, and it's going to hold that all the way up to frame 22, and on frame 23 it goes going to go back to zero. Uh, and if we analyze any of these lights, you're going to see they all have different colors and different lights and different values all over. And that being done, now we can go over here and we can probably do a quick little render to see what it's going to give us. So I'm going to go ahead and put the playhead over here. And I'm just going to do one quick little render here. So there you go. That's one. And if we move the playhead over here where it changes, we can do a render. And you can see that that image is going to look a little bit different. And I can continue doing this. And hopefully the image is different enough that you can see a difference. Uh, so there you go. That's one quick use for iteration. You can see that with very little code, it was like 67 lines of code, uh, we were able to populate uh, this with random light. So you can imagine. Uh, you're modeling a spaceship, a spaceship, and you need uh, needed to have random lights all over the spaceship going on and off. You can very easily write a Python script that's going to generate the lights and create some rules so that things can uh, be automatically be turned on and off. If you put a little bit more of work into it, you can make it so that it it's generated uh, automatically and randomly. But on top of that, you have control over when things go on and off. This pretty much wraps up our look at iteration. As we move into programming more modules and, and more tools, you'll see iteration show, in, show up everywhere. So I just want you guys to get used to all these concepts that we're introducing because they're going to be very useful in the future. So thank you very much and talk to you guys soon.